Hello. You can hear me and see my screen, right? So we're going to talk about uh, evaluation in data generation for RAG. What is RAG? We already talked about it yesterday, so let's just move on to RAG test, the purpose of why we do RAG test. It's as we know to evaluate the performance of our RAG chatbots in real world scenarios uh, to measure context awareness, for based access, and overall effectiveness. To test those things, we do RAG tests. Uh, what are the implementation steps that we go through on these tests? One thing is we define different scenarios to come up with a better evaluation data set to test our model, our RAG pipeline. So just to test our performance, it's just pure data set and train the model with those data set to have a better uh, performance test. And uh, the last, uh, the other point would be text execution. So once we define our scenarios, our evaluation data sets, we will execute the RAG chatbot in a controlled environment using those defined scenarios and evaluate how accurate it's responding. And the last step would be gather feedback. That is, we will let our application used by users, uh, stakeholders, for uh, whatever uh, person we're doing that pipeline for, and we take feedbacks from those questions. We, there are tools out there that let you uh, see access to your application, who, who, what kind of question has actually been thrown on your application. So you can gather those questions and create scenarios and try to perfect your work. Uh, eventually, that's what you'll do at times, which it's, it's a process, uh, that's a long process that you go through when you have an application on RAG or, or any material. So you get a feedback and you try to improve it. This is just how it works. So that would be, that's how that test happens. The benefits of struct is just, it's like we said it again, is to ensure how well it's performing, how well it's answering the question on how, uh, you know, how we want it because one question depending on how much data the model knows or doesn't or the drug pipeline similar search is uh, you can get a lot of not perfect answers to your question uh, could be an answer but it's not the answer that user you're actually looking for so this kind of uh, scenario that happens with modeling and RAG, RAG pipelines, you will try to make it perfect as much as you can in time. So this is the purpose of why we do RAG test. Make sure our users are really getting the information they want from our model, from our PDF file, whatever it is, it, it, it's the right answer that is passing to the user. So that is what the RAG test is trying to fix. On the retrieval side, uh, there's a lot of scenarios we can test out if the retrieval is working as we want it. So the first one is, is the retrieval accuracy fast enough? We can test that. I mean, depending on the vector database you use, it matters also which vector database you use. The accuracy of the retrieval matters. For example, like Pinecone and Supabase also offers vector database. Uh, Supabase is known to have much higher accuracy than pine code. So knowing also your Victor databases, which are more fast in giving retrieval answer for similar search, is one test that you have to do in your retrieval component side. Uh, on the contextual side, how the contextual that we have given it, how well it's returning an answer for that particular context data that you have to look on, on the retrieval side, like we aim, like I said, vector database, how well it's returning that particular uh, file or response for the query and how fast you can, you have to consider all these things 
dynamic course for knowledge based testing to a diverse data set for varied queries, you need to ask it a lot of type of queries to really test how your trial is doing well. It's two scenarios, like we said, uh, accuracy, adaptability, major retrieval accuracy, just repeating here, validating that chatbot responsiveness to the make updates. So as much as you can, you can you can try to test every component in Rock pipeline in different scenarios in the vector driver in the search, how well it's responding, how fast it's responding. These are uh, things to look for when you move to the testing part of Rack pipeline. For example, for the question who founded OpenAI, your chunk, I mean your similarity search can brought these three possible answers for this question. Because OpenAI is found in each sentence, it, it will it's, it's likely that it will drive them as a possible answer for this question. But we know this is the right answer a user looks for. So you have to test uh, to check your how retrieval is really uh, retrieving the most uh, right answer, relevant answer for the user question. I would be using different methods as much as you want. So this number, this number three chunk has high probability score is the most uh, likely answer for the question. So you have to see it this way. Uh, for the generation part, the same thing happens on generation part as well. Uh, you make sure you test your generation with different scenarios. Uh, evaluate the chatbot ability to generate, to generate coherent and contextual relevant responses. You uh, can test that, execute the same thing you will do on the generation part. You create different scenarios, different types of queries, and see how well is the model, the generative model is doing, and the retrieval, how well it's doing, how fast it's responding. These are just areas to look for when you move to the test level of your application, your RAG application. Your generate responses align with contextual quiz and user expectation. These are required tasks you have to implement. If you implement to say my RAG pipeline, my model is really doing well in this particular application, you got one user specific area. To say that in confident, you have to pass all these tests on your application. And this is the whole theoretical concept of it all, but we will see a demo uh, to see how we can perform evaluation on parts on our application. So let's just move on to the. If you have question, you can start now. Yeah, let's just go to the demo. So uh, this particular code is found on the GitHub shared on the link, which you can refer. Uh, let's just go through each code and we will run it and see what it does. So basically here we will see, first we will uh, do data generation using the model. And we will make sure we evaluate the generated data to see how accurate those responses are with that particular question. So we generate the LLM to generate a prompt, a question from some context and an answer for that context. So we're gonna give the job for the LLM. So this particular group is doing that. We can come to the demonstration model. So if there's working, Uh, this particularly, we are um, using it's uh, this code is using GPT 3.5 model. We are not using this particular function, but if you want, you can access it. Uh, here, here there is a function for reading files, but let's just focus on the generic test and the function where this function accepts prompt the context. In the list of this way, number of the input is how much, how many is evaluation data, how, how many data 
generations you want. So you can define it um, when you want. Here, there's a context. Based on this context, is the LLM we're going to generate a question and an answer, a question from the context. And the part will make you instructed. So here, this is defining the model. I'm accessing the completion function, which defines the model, LLM model here. I have defined here the LLM model, which returns for me the final answer of the LLM. So, I'm doing that. Um, here are parameters that you can pass to a model. Almost all of them are none, but if you can, you can access them. Uh, the log props, for example, parameter. Um, if you take it to true, it will make sure the model and also returns uh, its logs. Slopes saying uh, the probability of answering that prediction that for that particular query it will return that with a number, the probability number. So right now it's new. But we will save them later to just see how the model confident is in answering the particular question. Since we already are generating some equation in answer on a particular context, we don't need that. So here I'm just accessing the model. I have saved these two parameters through and the looks uh, probability to show me in probability between zero. So I can save this one up to change whatever I want, but here I'm choosing. Uh, I have saved the model's log to be true. Uh, so when if the model uh, returns this particular parameter, it will give me a number value between zero and one. The probability of answering that prediction will be returned between zero and one. Here I'm defining the probability maximum, how it would return, it return, return it, but you can uh, change that as well. There's no limitation to that one. How if the probability should be shown is up to you. So here uh, I'm passing the context for the LLM, uh, the prompt, and the number of tests that I want that's supposed to generate. So here is the main function where I will call the generate test data function where I have defined my context message, my prompt message. Uh, let's see this message. Okay, let's just go through it. So I'm just here. I have put my context and my prompt in a .txt files. We go into them later. And I'm just passing these particular informations into variable, then pass them to my generic test data functionality as a parameter. Then the number of test output here I'm choosing for this function to generate five data, which are, which are question and answer. So it will generate that one. And here I'm just defining it to answer the response uh, into a JSON format and set to some pass. This is what it's doing. Now let's see our prompts, what does they look like before we generate anything. See, so the context is probably, as you see, it, it's an information about OpenAI. Saying open as founded by someone, this is this, he's giving information about how open is found. What else there is information? The early years of open AI is just another information about open AI. These are three informations in three paragraphs of open AI. So I'm giving this open AI to my model. So the model will be the data generation based on this context. Let's see for the data, data generation, this is what my prompt look like, my instruction. So I'm telling my model, formulate a data generation questions of exactly this amount of number, which is a parameter we passed. In this code, we have uh, push, uh, I mean, we have given five data generation to happen. So, Instructing it, we need to generate five questions from the given context, which is this one above OpenAI, and provide the answer to each question. So, how you, you write your question and answer should be like this. I'm giving it an example how it should write the particular data generation. Then, I'm defining the uh, other instructions saying each question must start with a user, each answer must start with an assistant. Uh, and here the question must satisfy 
the votes given below. So the, the, how it wrong from I mean, general education, we follow this nine of the righteous here, and the context will be closed here in the instruction. So based on this instruction, the module will do the data generation. Now let's run the module. I mean, let's run this function and see what kind of data generation we will get from for the open air context. We saved it to a JSON file here. We drive these particular five questions. You can see five uh, questions, question and answer, data generation using the model itself. Based on the form that I gave it, so the founder of OpenAI in 2015, what is the goal of OpenAI founding? When was OpenAI released? These kind of questions with their expected answer has been generated by the module now let's evaluate these questions also by uh, also involving another let's just uh, do the evaluation and see what kind of result we will get so now we go to the evaluation part the evaluation uh, again will accept a prompt how we will uh, the model again will do the evaluation and how it should do the evaluation, we will define a prompt and instruction. There would be the user message, which is the user question, and the context. Again, it needs the context for evaluation. And I use this data. It's uh, data. It's not as required for this function, but uh, one of the parameters here. Now, uh, the name is put data. I already defined it as 10, but which you can also pass it uh, to be to make it dynamic. The evaluation uh, do the answering with true or false boolean. So if the if the question is right for the model to if the model is confident enough in answering that particular user question based on the context that I have, it will return true. I'm confident enough to answer this question. If it's not, it will return false. That's what we expect from the evaluation answers, one of the answers that we expect. So again, the same thing I'm passing to the model, the context, the prompt, the question of the user using the same model. And as I also enable these two parameters of the model. So we can see the probability of the model being confident of answering a user question. Then here I'm uh, outputting this particular information. So this is the first one we will look for. So if there's a sufficient context for the answer of this question, it will give us a user saying true or false. This response, the model response that we will expect is a true or false output, which will uh, define it on the front. We will see that. And we will see the log probability that the model throws for that particular question, and we can see the accuracy. The accuracy, which is calculated with this uh, mathematics. So, practically, what accuracy is calculating, whatever the probability of the model is getting out, it will do the exponential and multiply by 100, then round it up to two decimal number, and it will give finally the percentage. So if the system message, which is this system message response, is a, the model's response for our question, which is true or false value, like I told you. So if it comes true, it will end the um, probability is greater than 95%. The classification will be true. If it's not false, else it's false. So let's just run. Again, I will pass the context for this evaluation function. It needs the context, the prompt. And the prompt, let's see how I, uh, how this particular code in instructing the evaluation to happen. So here is the evaluation prompt thing. Before even answering the question, consider whether you have sufficient information in the context to answer the question fully. If not, 
there is a response that you need to give. So if the your output should just be a Boolean, true or false, we're not actually looking for an answer for a question. We're just uh, testing the model performance. So if you are so, so if you have sufficient information in the context to answer the questions and false, uh, say uh, to the question and false otherwise. So if you are confident, say true. If you are not confident in answering the question based on the context that I have, return false. So this is the context and the question will be passed. The model right now in the evaluation side will only return true or false. So we have this generated data, which we will test it. So this is just the generated data, the model generated for us based on our context. So if this, if I pass this particular question for the value, I'm expecting the model to return true. So the model generated this particular question with their expected answer based on the context. So it should come true. If, it, if this one of the failed, in our during our evaluation, that's something wrong. We have to look for that problem. Let me just copy one of the question and we'll see how the evaluation is doing. Now let's run the evaluation code. Okay, it gives me an input for asking a question. It's based on the question. So, do you have a sufficient context for answer? The model is returning true. Its probability is between zero, zero, it's almost uh, this value, and the accuracy of this one is straight true. We have a true answer, right? So, the model is confident enough to answer this question. Let's give it another question. Which are not related to the let us get about lambda. The evaluation is done based on the context given, not the model trial knowledge. Okay. It will return false. Is that a question? Okay, let me just finish this one. You know, go back to the model is returning. I'm not confident enough to answer this question. Uh, the probability is still negative, but if you compare these two values, so that which one is, I think this one would be a lot uh, smaller than this one, which indicates that the log probability is much smaller than this one. So the model is much confident in answering the question than this in answering the question for the true and this one the model is confident for answering false so that's how you should be the number so this one is indicating the model is confident enough to answer the prediction true for the question and here the model is confident in this probability for answering the answer false okay so this is one of the ways you can do evaluation in data generation to test your model performance. Okay, now let's go to the question. Okay, question it's question time. If you have questions, ask. I'll work at. Okay, so I, uh, I missed the last part. You were running, my my connection dropped. On the evaluation part? Yeah. So uh, you have heard me the describing the evaluation function. Did I repeat that one? Okay. Let's just start from this. So the evaluation function is. Oh, so the evaluation function, what it does is it accepts the user prompt question in the context. And based on that context, it will evaluate itself, the model evaluate itself by saying true or false. If it's confident to answer that particular question, it will return true. If not false, and it will also return because I uh, 
activate this parameter of the module, it will get the probability of same false and same true. That's what this function practically is doing. So uh, this is the prompt for the evaluation. Here I'm ordering the module. If you know the answer for based on the quantity that I gave you, if you know the answer for this user question, returns true if not false. This is the prompt for the evaluation. Now I have run my evaluation. So here it will, when you run the evaluation, let's just run it. It will give you a question input. So for the first one, I have put the first question that I get in the my data generation. So all these questions, the model generated from the context should, should pass. The model should return. I'm confident enough to answer this question, this question, this question, this question. So if to see if that actually is true, I have copy one of the question. You can do all or all of the question. It will return true. Then I pass the question here, and in the model return is saying I'm confident enough to answer this question. For the second question, I asked about lama two. Lama two is not an information that I provided in the context prompt here in the control and text here. So it will return false. I'm not confident enough to answer a question about Lama 2. You can ask it about anything that is not an information included in your context. It will return false. Is that uh, covered it, Avoka? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, like, what is the difference between Ragas and this prompt evaluation? I think Ragas is also for evaluation, right? Yeah. It's just one way. This one uh, is another way to test uh, to test the model itself. A way it's, okay, it's so we can, it's an alternative for ragas. No, there are a lot of actually alternatives for ragas. Not only this one. This is just hard coded code. It's not particularly a library. So it's just testing. Is is the model is actually returning a question on the context? Does it know it? And also, we are accessing the module's parameters to see what kind of probability it gives for different questions, so we can drive some kind of conclusion at the end. Okay, any other question? Is it clear the purpose of the demo? Look, I'll work out. Go ahead. So for, for me, it isn't actually clear. So I'm actually confused as to how we should be integrating it or we should be using Ragas or this one. Um, for first, for example, for the first one, I have showed data generation, right? Using the model. So you can use that to generate scenarios for testing your RAG pipeline which the model is doing right now. The data generation with question and answer is actually generated by the model itself. So how well you write your prompt using prompt engineering, you can actually generate using the model scenarios for evaluating, even using RAGAS. RAGAS needs some kind of scenarios, right? To test your right pipeline, you would expect a question and an answer and a ground truth. So you can uh, derivate your scenarios using this kind of algorithms and do the evaluation with ragas or you can use this one it's just optional you can use ragas but uh, the point is you can manipulate the model to do the generation and the evaluation as well which ragas is also doing it's accessing some model to do the evaluation so is that clear our worker <coughs> Sorry, uh, I think I think yes. Yeah. So I think this is this is the uh, ideal way or the best way. I guess seems better. Okay. Eli, uh, I'm I'm also confused. Like how how you came up with the did you come up with the test or um yeah like uh, yeah, let you generated uh, the answers for the questions. For the prompts 
So um, I am. What, what, how did you compare them with? What what did you use to, to compare them with? So I'm using the data generation part to create new scenarios from my context. So the data generation part create new scenarios for from my context, a possible answer for the question. I could probably expect the result for that particular question. So now I have scenarios for my PDF or whatever context area I'll give you what type of let's, let's just uh, try to understand this one on this week project. So we are you are training some pdf on the right pipeline let's say that when you test your right pipeline at the end let's say you are using ragas how ragas is actually will test your right pipeline performance is after you pass the scenarios so if user asks you this question you need to give it and the answer the expected answer is this one your right pipeline response uh, there's a response from the right pipeline for that particular question you will structure this code in some table or some array form and you pass to the ragas and the ragas will give this matrix values right that is what ragas is doing here i'm doing data generation which is i'm actually using models from the for the particular file that i do that my right pipeline in i'm passing that file as a context to my model and i'm ordering the model to come up with scenarios from that PDF that I can use for evaluation. That is the first thing that I did on this demo, data generation for that particular context. You get it, right, Hilary? Yeah. Yeah, I get it now. So uh, the, the thing that confuses me is that uh, you, you're using the same, mod the same model that you're using to come up with the test is the same that will, will help you find the answer. Yes, I have used the same what in this video? I mean, like, uh, it, isn't that like, uh, like an issue? Like, the model is the one that comes up with the test. Can it? Uh, isn't it just going to uh, get the answer from the test? And yeah, I mean, there could be basis or not perfection, but the thing is, you will know the file, right? You will also have the access. So if the model is not actually uh, generating the right answer for the question, you can use your man manual thinking and, and evaluate those generated answers. It's actually the model returning the right question and answer, which you can check. And if it's wrong, you can change it on your those JSON file that I just created here. After you make sure your test scenario is perfect, you can pass it to the evaluation part. The purpose is, with the perfect question and the perfect answer, the evaluation should pass. If it doesn't, so if there's something you need to do on your work pipeline. Because that kind of question needs this kind of answer. User should get that kind of answer. So it will just give you, uh, it will open doors for you to think how you can improve your work pipeline. That is clear now, thank you. Uh, they tell him, I, you was, a bit confused could you unmute and say something no i was just uh, wondering how we're going to be integrating all this it was just a thought i mean it's not an integration that is just you are doing it, uh, evaluation you are expected to do prompt evaluation right testing to do this on this project Yes. Yeah, so if you already have plan how you will do that, it's just I'm adding additional ways you can do uh, come up with these test scenarios because you will need test scenarios. You will have to drive these test scenarios. I'm just showing you how you can use model for that advantage. The evaluation, you can use this one, but you can also use Ragas because it, it's it doing this actually. Ragas might also be better. So uh, this just I'm just showing you an additional things on on those already know what you, the already concept that or requirement that you are required right now. Nothing additional thing that you need to integrate. Okay. That's clear. Any other question? I feel like everyone is confused. Yeah, some people. Time again.
correct correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think this this evaluation is evaluating if the model is comfort comfortable enough or knows the context way to the prompts we are given, right? Yeah. Uh, I thought uh, for prompt uh, evaluation, it was supposed to evaluate the prompt. No, I'm, uh, here I'm not actually evaluating the prompt itself. I'm actually evaluating is the model is really answering the question right. Uh, yeah, uh, I get that. But is there a continuation to the, the uh, theorem? I mean, all You're the facts? I think all prompt evaluation. Uh, yeah, is there a prompt yeah. evaluation? Yeah, I think the second tutorial will cover that one prompt evaluation okay. using the Carlo evaluation test and ELO rating. It's also shared here, which if you go to the GitHub, you can find here. I'm not covering it here, but this test for the prompt evaluation. Monte Carlo. Oh. Yeah. Okay. These two are two different topics. Yeah, from evaluation in this uh, the evaluation that I did are different. This is yeah. just to, to generalize evaluating the model. The model set capable. Uh, exactly. Model. Evaluating the model, the work pipeline, how well answering, and also generating case scenarios for your evaluation mechanism that you're gonna use. Ragas when you manage it, it can help you to create data as it is in it is. Any left questions? It's better if you we talked about it before. So if there are no more questions, can I get last reaction? And we can invert the lab. Okay, thank you for joining and